Hello everyone. First of all, a warm welcome to Oracle Integration Cloud Training by Unogix. In today's session, I'm going to show you how to create or provision a new OIC instance or Oracle Integration Cloud instance. Okay. So the prerequisite to a provision a new OIC instance is to have an OCI account. OCI stands for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. OIC stands for Oracle Integration Cloud. So to provision a new OIC instance, you need to have a OCI account, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure account. In case you don't have one, you can refer to my a previous video and create a free pair account for yourself. All you need is a, a credit card and you can create it in three simple steps. And once you have your OCI account created, log into your OCI account using this URL. Okay, open any browser and paste it in there. You will have your cloud account name with you. Uh, so when you create an OCA account, you will receive an email which will have this uh, the, the cloud account name assigned to you. So I'm typing in mine. You can type in yours. Click on next. So it will ask you to uh, use a single sign-on using an IDCS uh, service. IDCS stands for Identity Domain Cloud Service. And uh, yeah, first you need to provide your credentials to sign into the OCI account. So click on continue. And key in your username and password. So when you create a new OCA account for yourself, you will have a $400 credit added to your account and you will be able to use these credits to buy any of the services offered by oracle over cloud okay so you could buy a database you could be you could buy a virtual machine or you can if you click on the navigator you will see what all services are offered by oracle in cloud and you can use these credits to buy any of those uh, uh, any of those uh, infrastructure or the databases okay so you have a quick, uh, quick links available here. So for example, if you want to create an ATP database, you can just click on it. It will be like a follow along steps. You will have a three or four steps that you need to complete and then ATP database will be provisioned. So that's how easy it is to get the services from Oracle Cloud. Okay, so let me close this browser. Yeah. And to provision, a uh, so if you look at the services, they are grouped into a logical, a logical sets here. So yes, if you want to buy a core infrastructure, so for example, if you want to get a platform for, from Oracle that you could use for, uh, that you might want to use for application development, if you want to get compute power or a storage, object storage or file storage, you can get those uh, services from the core infrastructure section. And similarly, if you go to Oracle database, you have n number of databases available from Oracle, not just a plain on-premise database uh, that used to be the case earlier. You've got, uh, you've got autonomous data, uh, data warehouse, ADW, and you've got ATP as well. So these are ATP stands for autonomous transaction processing, ADW stands for autonomous data warehouse. So these are two popular types of Oracle databases offered over cloud. And, and as you can make out from the name itself, each, each one has its own usage. So if you are intending to use a particular database for transaction processing, it makes sense to buy an ATP. If you want to use it as a warehouse, you could go for an ADW database. So if, you're probably, uh, if you probably need a, a database which you want to uh, support a web application that you're planning to build, you could probably go for JSON because uh, it, it makes it quite easy to work with a JSON database when it comes to building web applications. Okay, and similarly, you can go for, you can get a MySQL database or a NoSQL database. And similarly, you've got quite, quite a few other options as well. 
Okay. And the one that we are interested in here, uh, it will be available under platform services. Go to platform services, scroll down. You will be able to see integration available as an option in there. Click on it. I think it got redirected to the same page. Let's click on it one more time. Go to platform services and click on integrations. Well, there has been a small change in the navigation option space. Earlier, we used to procure OSC instance under platform services. Uh, and uh, by clicking on this integration option, but now it has been changed and you have to go to solutions and platform, click on application integration and select the integration option available in there. Click on it and you will be able to see, uh, see the integration instances here. And you can place the integration instances in compartments. So the way uh, compartments work is think of them as a boxes into which you can place your, or in which you can place your OIC instances. So you can, uh, one, one simple and straightforward way is uh, pick up your root compartment and create your integration instance and place it in the root compartment. But that's not an ideal way of uh, doing things. You will usually create a one compartment per milestone, like you create a dev compartment and you, you place your dev OS instance within that. And you create SIT and UAT compartments and you place SAT and UAT OAC instances in those respective compartments. But for the sake of demo, we don't get into the compartment creation. We'll just go ahead and create an integration instance and we'll place it in the root compartment. That's absolutely fine. So to create an OAC instance, just click on this button, create integration instance, give it a name. You can say a dev OIC. You can give any name you want for that matter but we typically follow a proper naming conventions that your client would have handed over to you. So you might probably call a dev OIC instance as dev OIC, SIT OIC as SIT OIC, and so on. Okay, so you give it a name. I'll, I'll call it a dev OIC. And you need to pick up an addition. So OIC instance or OIC instance is available in two editions. So, okay, so the uh, the Oracle Integration Cloud has three products. OIC product has three services included as part of it. It has got integrations and it has got VBCS and it has got PCS. Okay. So, and there are, and uh, the OIC instance is available in two flavors a standard edition. And in the standard edition, you will get only the integrations and a VPCS. Okay, so if you go for Enterprise Edition, you will get integrations, VPCS, and on top of it, you will also get a PCS. So depending on the client requirement, so if client has a requirement to build a, some approval process or a custom business process in PCS, then while procuring the OIC instance itself, he can go for enterprise edition. If there is no need of a PCS or if there is no need to use, uh, there is one more difference between standard and enterprise. Uh, yes, the obvious uh, difference is a PCS, which will be available only in enterprise edition. And on top of this, uh, there are some on-premise application adapters, uh, such as EBS adapter or, or uh, SAP adapter or some adapters, which help you to connect to on-premise applications and those adapters will be available only in enterprise edition. Okay. So you can, you can, client can pick up or you can rather suggest to client what edition they need to go for. And don't think that this will be freezed. You can change these options at any point in time. So depending on the visibility that you have at this point in time, if there was no requirement to use PCS, you can go with a standard edition, procure OIC instance, and, and then uh, start using it. At a later point in time, if you realize that, yes, we do need PCS now, 
all you need to do was uh, edit the OS instance that you have created and uh, switch the edition from standard to enterprise. And it just takes 10 minutes for OIC to restart. And once it restarts, you will be able to see the PCS and on-premise adapters are showing up. Okay, so yeah, uh, you need to pick up an appropriate edition and don't worry, it can be changed later on in case you pick the wrong one or in case requirement changes uh, tomorrow. And you've got license type, again, two options. If you don't have an OIC license, you can get one. Or in case you already have a license, you can pick up this option. So depending on whether you have, whether you have, whether you already have a license or not, you pick up appropriate option. So if you don't have a license, pick up the first one and you need to mention the number of message packs here. So the message packs indicate how many messages do you want to process per hour? So in OIC instance, the billing works on the basis of messages processed per hour. Okay, and the number of messages per hour are calculated in multiples of 5,000. So depending on, so if you, if you're planning to build say 10 or 20 integrations and if those 20 integrations might need or might require 3,000 messages per hour, say approximately, then you can go for one message pack. But if those, uh, but, but if you have uh, say many business event subscription based, uh, based integrations or, or if you have integrations wherein the pay, payloads are going to be of huge size, and if you think that a 5,000 messages per hour will not be enough, then you can go for a two or probably three message packs, whatever you feel is appropriate. And again, this can be increased at a later point in time. Usually a two message packs is a, a reliable figure to go with. Okay, and you can click on show advanced options. You can, that's okay. You don't, you don't need to probably change anything. If you want to give some custom endpoint, you can do that, but that's okay. We, we normally stick to uh, what gets generated out of the box. Okay, uh, instance name, edition, license type, number of message packs. That's all you need. And if you want to put in some tags, you can you can do that. So you can probably say this is an OIC dev instance. And uh, these tags will help you later on uh, when you when you track to or when you want to yeah track your costs or or track your resources. These tags will come handy. But we'll not get into it uh, in the demo. So let's go ahead and create it. And you could see that the instance a state is creating at the moment. So OS instance is being created in the background at the moment. And it'll take approximately five to 10 minutes for the OS instance to be ready. Okay, so I'll, I'll pause the video here for a moment uh, of a few minutes till a uh, dev OS instance is ready. And once it is ready, we will resume the uh, resume the video. Well, you can see that uh, the OIC instance is provisioned now, uh, the state is active. And to launch OIC instance, you have to just click on the name. That will open up the uh, instance details. Uh, you can see the name that you have given for your OIC instance. And you can copy the service console URL here. You can copy it and you can paste it in a new browser and that will launch Oracle Integration Cloud instance. So we are logging into Oracle Integration Cloud instance now. And if you look at the URL that is generated, uh, it, there is a specific pattern to it. Uh, so the first uh, few words a few letters will be the name of the instance that you have, uh, that you, the name you that you have given to your instance. We have used a dev OIC, so that has shown up in a URL. And then you have a system generated ID, followed by a suffix, which remains same for all OIC instances. That's dot integration dot OCP dot Oracle Cloud dot com slash IC slash home. So this URL suffix will remain same. Okay, and we are logged into Oracle Integration Cloud instance name. And what you can do in this, or what what is what exactly is Oracle Integration Cloud, and uh, what services are available? Like uh, the OIC has three services, uh, three key services to be precise. It has got integrations, a process cloud service, and Visual Builder cloud services. 
So in another video, I'll talk about uh, what Oracle Integration Cloud is all about, and I'll explain what are the features or the, or, or the services available in OIC. Okay, and uh, this is how you can uh, create a new OIC instance or provision it. Okay, and uh, here, so you you just have to copy the URL and launch it. So let's go back to the PPT ones. So yes, we logged into OIC instance sorry, OCI instance, and I've given you an overview of uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure. I've explained what services are available uh, and what, what else can you procure apart from OIC instance uh, from Oracle Cloud. Yes, we did create a new OIC instance, which took uh, approximately 10 minutes uh, to be provisioned. And we've looked at the, the different editions that are available in OIC, like standard and enterprise. And I've also mentioned that enterprise, will have everything that is available in standard plus a process cloud service plus on-premise application adapters, okay? And in the next video, we'll look at how to create users and we will also see what roles are available in OIC. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll discuss the roles, uh, different types of roles available. And we'll also assign few roles to the users uh, and, and exactly understand how it has to be done. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, in case you are interested in Oracle Integration Cloud training offered by OIC, you can uh, uh, reach us in any of these modes. You can either call us or, or drop us an email, or you can, uh, if you are interested in the course content, or if you want to know more details about our OIC training, please do visit our website. Thanks for watching, guys.